I'm a huge fan of buying older digital cameras. They're much, much cheaper than newer ones. They still perform very well, and they're just downright cool. Cooler than their newer counterparts, in my opinion. But before you do go out and buy one, please consider these things and don't make these common mistakes, uh, mistakes that I may or may not have made many, many times. Thank you to Wasabi Power for sponsoring this video and they're gonna help us out later in one of these tips. The first thing you should consider is memory type or memory card format. So digital cameras all use these removable memory card formats and for, for the most part, they are not compatible with one another. For older digital cameras, it gets even more complicated because there are so many different types and types that are not even made anymore. And with whatever card type your camera supports, you're also gonna need a way to transfer those files, read that card onto your computer or to your phone with something like a card reader. What I don't want to have happen to you is what happened to me when I bought this camera, the Ricoh RR1, which just looked cool. I had researched it and I knew some things about it, but for whatever reason, I didn't research the memory card format, which is smart media. There's these super thin little disc things. And it turns out there are hardly any smart media card readers on the market today. So finding one was super difficult and just doubled the cost of this purchase. So before you nab a camera, look up what memory card it uses on a website like my classic camera database website. Once you find that, make sure you can find cards and a card reader that supports that format. And if the camera you want has a card format that's not made anymore, like the Sony Memory Stick Duo 2 or something specific like that, then I would advise that you make sure when you're buying the camera that it's included in the lot. This happens on eBay and like Mercari and Facebook Marketplace a lot. Usually people throw in the card. So just look out for it. Otherwise, you're gonna have to go find it on eBay or some other place and source it. And that's gonna add cost and time. The second thing that I think is important to consider is battery type. Sometimes the camera you want includes a battery and charger, and that's great, and sometimes it doesn't. Either way, it's good to know what the battery type is and if third parties make it today. Because if something goes wrong with your charger or battery, you're gonna need a new one, and if it's not made anymore, you're out of luck. Once again, you can find this information on a website like my classic camera database. I'm working really hard to make sure that these battery model numbers are accurate and up-to-date. Logged in users can edit these, or you can always message me if you find some error. Now, in most cases, batteries are available today, but not all of them. So I would go to a website like wasabipower.com and type in the battery model number. They often sell just the battery or battery charger combos, depending on what you need. And in my experience, I've been able to get almost everything I've wanted from Wasabi Power. But if they don't have that model number, then drop it into Google as well and just double check that it's not available anywhere else. What I like about Wasabi Power and why I've used them for years as opposed to some other random internet source is that they have a warranty on their batteries. So if you do run into any issues with them, you can get a replacement even a couple years later, which is nice. And you can get 10% off with coupon code SNAPPINESS. If the battery type for the camera you want is not available anymore anywhere, I would hesitate. I would caution you from purchasing that camera. You can, and you can figure out a way, and people do, but I would caution you. The third thing to consider before buying a used old digital camera is the lens mount. This doesn't apply to fixed lens cameras you might be buying. We'll get to that in just a minute. So listen carefully. Some types of lenses are very difficult to find in a given mount. What I mean by that is if you know that you want a wide angle fast prime, for instance, or a super telephoto lens, there are some lens mounts that either do not have that option at all, or if they do, they are very rare collectible and command extremely high prices. For example, the original four thirds mount like on this camera has, has some lens options, but they are far and few between and quite expensive for what they are. On the other hand, the Sony A mount or the Minolta A mount has these wonderful old Minolta lenses that are readily available. There's tons of them and they're super cheap and they're great. And I'll give you a hint. If you like super telephoto photography, don't get a Pentax K mount camera the pain is all too real. So before you buy a camera, do the best you can to decide what types of photography am I interested in? What lenses would be best for that kind of photography? And just start searching in those mounts and seeing if they're readily available and for a price that you're willing to pay. Here's a bonus tip. For cameras with fixed lenses or really any camera, you can search on Flickr for images taken on that camera. The advantage for fixed lens cameras is it really gives you an idea of the lens quality and if that's something you're interested in working with and if you're impressed by it. But for any camera, you'll get a sense of the image quality and Flickr's a great website for this. The fourth important thing you should consider is whether or not it has the features you want, the specific features. 
For instance, when talking about old digital cameras on this channel, people will approach me and innocently ask about video capabilities. Well, most old DSLRs don't have video at all. And then those older cameras that do, their video quality has a vibe to it. <laughs> There's definitely a certain type of people that are gonna like how that looks, but it might not be you. The other things I would consider checking is, can it shoot raw format? Does it have manual controls and how manual, or is it just auto? Can it fit in my pocket? Is that important to you? Does it have a built-in flash? Things like that. Number five is a combo one, and I'll start with this. Don't be tempted by cameras that are for parts or just have some major problems with them. This tip is debatable, and in my years of purchasing old gear, I have been known to buy cameras with defects, and uh, but I've been burned more often than I have not been. So I would recommend just waiting it's, it can be super tempting to save a lot of money and buy a camera with a little bit of a defect and just think, oh, I'll just work around that for the rest of my life. But in almost all cases where I've done this, I've regretted it. It's just worth it. Even if it means waiting longer to save up for a better condition copy, you should do that. And related to this and in the same tip is you should research the common problems that that camera may have. Most old digital cameras cannot be fixed whether it's because of parts availability or expertise, if it breaks, it's a brick. So it's worth it that before you get serious about a particular camera model to research common issues, you can do this by just typing into Google the camera model name issues and just see what comes up. Start poking around in Facebook groups and forums and things like that and just ask around, get an idea. Does this camera break a lot? And this can also help you be better informed about what questions to ask a seller if you're buying a camera in a peer-to-peer -peer environment. If you know that there's a common issue, you can ask the seller to test that issue to verify that it's working completely. I have a free ebook that I created that's linked in the description that goes over how to buy used camera gear, all my tips and tricks about how to get really good deals and stay safe online. So check that out. And if you wanna know where I personally like to go and buy used camera gear, then you can check out this video here where I review my top three favorite websites. I'll see you over in that video. And until next time, as always, happy snapping.